and Dalton. Are you ready? Okay, so Dalton is one of our local uh, residents and an activist in this, and he's going to talk about tracing the flow of water from Hurricane Debbie. but I feel the need to kind of give you guys this little disclaimer. Um, I have a background in stormwater and land development and things like that. I just want to address a few things before we get started. I would like for those of you that's interested in what I have to say, uh, if you find any value in it, I'm trying to get another meeting where we can go over this as a community in a slower, more easy to understand format because it's a lot of information. Unfortunately, there's a lot of numbers, a lot of figures. And so uh, I, I just want to say that these are my opinions. These are from my experience. These are things that I've seen and I've interpreted from looking at the information uh, in the data. So I do not represent any of my employers that I have worked for, my president worked for, or anything like that. And not to discourage or disparage or anything like that, anybody from Nancy County, but there has been some comments made that Manatee County does not want us to be here tonight, and they do not want us to say what we're trying to say. So with that in mind, I'm going to get into the topic. And I believe there is a picture, if you don't mind running that for me, that I want to go over really quick. So we're going to talk about how the water flows in Manatee County. And this map right here, it's kind of hard to see, my apologies, but essentially that blue outline there is the entire of Manatee County. And so the greener areas and the higher areas and the blue areas are obviously low areas where there's bodies of water. And so if we go over here to this next slide, that's going to land what I'm going to talk about. So there are several major feeds into the Manatee River, and one of those that we've consistently heard about is Yemel Creek. I want to take some time to focus on Yemel Creek because of all that's happened to it in the surrounding areas. This will apply to many other feeds in Manatee County, as you see here on this board. Uh, was the, top, the topographical map that I showed you. And uh, we're going to focus on Gamble Creek where the water flows, which is up there where the red arrow is, is 62. The other area right here that is a little farther down where the green, orange, and yellow is, is 675. The water flows from the north, northeast of 62, gathers in a field over there, and flows underneath 675 down into Gamble Creek. Now, a lot of you guys that live on 675, 62 understand that Gamble Creek runs behind a lot of your properties. That is where a lot of the water comes from that feeds into the Manatee. And as it makes its way down where the new Salt Meadows community is, it has been choked. There is nowhere for the water to go. It funnels the water flow, and as it continues down by Salt Meadows, and I'm going to document this later, um, we've experienced a lot of problems with the new Salt Meadows community. So as it flows down, it goes underneath 675, underneath Jim Davis Road, underneath Golf Course Road, and it eventually flows out to the Manatee River. Um, which is, as you can see here, if you kind of follow the track, it's right in red, and then some of the uh, yellow and orange portions. <coughs> The, the county has essentially said that they've released 18 million gallons of water at 13,500 cubic feet a second. So to put that in perspective for you guys, it's a really complex number to understand, but for an acre of land to be filled up with an inch of water, just an inch of water is 28,000 gallons. Now if you break down their number, their number breaks down into 6,058,800 gallons a minute. That is roughly 216 and a half feet of water on one acre, an entire acre. 
for the duration of one minute of flow at the peak of the dam. Now granted, it was not obviously that amount for the full time that the gates were open in these plugs. Um, now that you understand that a little bit, we're going to go into the normal water levels of the dam. According to all of the public information that we found, the dam level normally stays around 40 feet. To the top of the gates, the, the you know, gates that they move to control flow, that's about 44 feet. And then to the top of the dam where you can stand and drive over it's about 55 feet. All this is going to play into a, a role later that you guys will understand. These plugs that they're talking about, there's, a, there's another picture. Okay. It, it might be hard to see, but there's a bunch of little posts right there in front of the, uh, the dirt that you can see that's eroded away. Those posts hold what you call a charge, which is essentially a movable barrier that um, they have to manually pull out of the way. Once that charge is pulled out of the way, water is allowed to flow over a couple of these plugs. Now, the plugs that you see here, there's eight of them in total. Five is completely gone, six is partial, and then seven is completely gone. As you can see in this picture, uh, off in the field over there, there are several track marks where the Manson County actually clawed these out with an excavator. And essentially what that means is that they were trying to alleviate the pressure from blowing these plugs out. These plugs are designed to blow out all eight plugs at about 44 to 45 feet, which in my opinion, and uh, Manatee County has somewhat confirmed this, is a catastrophic event. That is a emergency event that these plugs, all eight of them, blow out. Um, so the concrete section that you see here on this picture, the base elevation of it, meaning the, the concrete section, is at 38 feet. If they did not have that charge in place, these plugs would continuously erode, and they wouldn't do their job. Now that you understand that part of the dam, uh, once these plugs are gone, they're gone. There, there is essentially no putting them back without getting dirt in there, getting an earth moving equipment in there to slip them like they're supposed to be. These plugs are engineered by somebody a lot smarter than me um, that you know has taken the time to really research at what levels these plugs need to erode at to relieve pressure on the dam. Um, while these plugs are out of place, what a lot of people have not been told is they're susceptible to what they call an, un, it's an uncontrolled flow or an uncontrolled release of water, which is saying that, and you know, like the gates, the gates they can open and close, they have a flow. These plugs have no control. They're, once the level gets up above 38 feet, water starts to flow out of these plugs, and there is, there is no stopping it until it gets back down to 36 feet which is uh, what we've seen the level at, at the dam. Um, the gates, according to Manatee County, have a full open of 15 feet. Now, safe open is 11 feet. That's what they're comfortable with allowing these gates to flow at, is 11 feet, uh, essentially full open. There is a Herald Tribune article from 2003. I want you guys, I'm gonna give you a little homework, I apologize. There is a Herald Tribune article from 2003. I highly recommend you guys to take a look at that article. There are some very specific numbers that I'm fixing to tell you in there that talk about the same exact style of event that happened this year. And that is to say they got 12 inches of rain, the lake got up to 42.4 feet, and they had a gate stop. It's the exact same scenario that we just seen here, just this year. Okay, and this was all the way back in 2003. Now, how they rectified the situation, instead of pulling these plugs out, is they put divers in the water, and they had a crane out there, and they opened the gate that was jammed. And so, why? We don't know. Manatee County hasn't really given me an answer on that yet, unfortunately, and I don't know if we're going to get an answer. I suspect that is because they were trying to get as much flow out of the dam as possible without disturbing these plugs. These plugs have never been used before. These plugs were untested, and when the water flow started to rush against these plugs, they weren't sure if they were gonna work or not. These plugs are from the 50s, they are old. And their number that they quote in this article is very specific. It's 18,000 cubic feet a second, which is to say all three gates were flowing about three, or a, excuse me, 6,000 cubic feet per gate. Now in this event, this year, they were only flowing at about 4,500. 
is what I was told. So only about 13.5. That was the figure that they said, and that's why they opened those plugs in order to get the flow of the third gate. Um, the next thing that I want to go over really quick is some things that I've documented in the community. This is some, some problems with some new developments, such as salt meadows and the, the, an existing community, to kind of see how this thing progresses. Can you go to the next slide? This right here, this structure, is two concrete walls, and then there's that thing right there that's a horseshoe shape in the middle. This is called a weir wall. This is a flood, flood alleviating structure, I would say. Well, that's the term I'm going to use. Essentially, uh, that thing in the middle is called a skimmer, and the walls on the side are to prevent the, the, the flow. And essentially, that metal piece does not go all the way to the bottom. There is a gap there, and as you can see, um, there is kind of like a bowl shape that's at the back, and if you know kind of how your toilet works, there is a P-trap in there. So once the water level on one side gets too high, it flows through the trap and out the other side. It's the same principle here. Um, this example, as you can see in the, the middle of the page right there, it is flowed out. So it is releasing water uncontrollably into Gamble Creek right now. I've made the developer aware of this. They know about it. And they're supposed to be getting out there to fix it. Uh, can you go to the next one? This right here is another common deformity that we see. This is in Country Creek. At the back of Country Creek, it is the same type of system that was hard to see. That palm tree right there was uh, actually on top. That's about a six or an eight foot hole. That's where the water has overfilled that pond and started to actually dig out the dirt right around that concrete wall. Um, I believe that's the last slide. Right? Okay, cool. So now that we've covered all that, I want to, I want to kind of give you guys a little more explanation as far as these systems. Okay? These systems are designed to alleviate the flow of water. They're designed to hold the water in these systems until they can either evaporate and soak in the ground or the water level becomes too high and they naturally flow out. All of these systems impact all of us. Whether your community flooded or not, they may have affected another community by failing like this. And so I want to ask you guys, if you don't mind, I have a YouTube channel. It's called Parish News Network on YouTube. You're more than welcome to look it up. You can ask me questions. My email's in there. And I'm going to try and get to as many questions as I can at the end of this. Thank you. I'm sure that was very informative, and now we know more about how water flows. Um, I was surprised during the event that there were people said, that said, I didn't know we had a dam. Now you do. <laughs> All right, so our next speaker is uh, Mark Bandery. Mark bandery has been around a while here, and one thing we could always count on with Mark, he delivers a very well-crafted, well-said message in our BOCC meetings. And he's always been a very calm and wonderful influence for all of us. And he's been dealing with things at uh, Waterline Road for quite a while now. So Mr. Bandery, are you ready? Good evening. My name is Mark Bandery. I grew up in the Sarasota, Manatee area. Went to high school down in Venice. Graduated in 72. <laughs> Can't help that. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm representing the uh, group called the Waterline Road Preservation Group. About 25 years ago, we uh, bought some property out on Waterline Road near the dam, and we've been concerned ever since in, in dealing with the county about some of the development going on around East County. And we've noticed over the years, we've noticed an increase of the flooding on Manatee Road, I mean uh, Waterline Road and Dam Road. Two roads are connected. They go right by the southwest corner of Lake Manatee. And I've got a uh, little presentation here. Um, like a couple slides I had here. Just, I want to show you the area that we're talking about. Um, not quite that far. Go back on it. Now, I, I am a retired uh, professional engineer in the state of Florida, uh, but I just want to say I'm, I am not a hydrology expert. That's not my area of expertise. But uh, I do know a little 
a little bit about it. <laughs> Here. All right, that's going to show a little bit of the, um, the area that I'm talking about. It's a lot louder, isn't it? Better. 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 Okay. Now, my battery's running out on my corner here. Here's the dam. Here's the lake. This here is Waterline Road. Okay. This is the water plant. That's where we're drinking water's come from a lot of the county. This is Dam Road here. This is State Road 64 here. And the red line is uh, tracing a creek called Sand Branch. Now in the past several weeks, we, we've experienced a, an incredible amount of water like a lot of folks in the county. We, we, we've got a lot of rain. And like Dalton was saying earlier, this is not the first large amount of rain we've had. We've had similar events in the past. We've had events in 01, 03, where there was a, a big dam discharge. Um, we've had events in uh, more recently, 2017, with the hurricane, 2000, uh, uh, 2022, the hurricane, uh, 2004, 2005, when we got, I don't know, whole bunch of hurricanes. We've got a lot of water. Okay. <laughs> but what we've noticed is that even with all that rain back in, in those days, progressively, as each year passed and more development ensued in the area, there, there is a correlation with the amount of water that we were getting on Waterline Road and Dam Road as the developments increased. Now, just the last couple of years, near Waterline Road, we've had this area here clear cut. Now, if you notice, this here, that's all wetlands. All up in here, across State Road 64. This road here is Bornside. It's closed right now for construction because to the east of Bornside, there's another 5,000 some odd acres being clear cut, if they haven't already been clear cut. That was just done recently, in the past year. This down here, that's all Star Farms area. That's all built out, paved over, roofs. This is all wetlands here. They've encroached on the wetlands. Some of it they've filled in. There's no place for the water to go. Well, I'm not going to get political about it today here. I'm going to try to focus on what we've experienced in the past 25 years. And we have not seen a whole lot of help from Swift Mud or DEP. Um, some of our neighbors are not blaming the developers. They're saying, why are the county officials and the state officials and the Fed officials allowing this rezoning and development to go on in the first place? Developers are just doing something. The, the developers are just making money. They're in the, in the business to make money. And they're just doing what, what they can. They're doing what they're being allowed to do. My opinion, I think both of us. Now, what we've seen in this past month with all this rain that we've been getting, is water coming from the clear-cut area on this new development. I think they call it Taylor Ranch and East River. That's all clear-cut. And that water's coming over here to where Star Farms is. And it's collecting where the wetlands are supposed to be, getting collected by Sand Branch and sheet flowing, flooding across State Road 64. There's, there's four culverts right along in here under State Road 64 just to handle this wetland and sand branch flow. It's all coming on to this property here, which is Palm Grove, which is all clear-cut under development. And that's all flowing 
across Waterline and Dam Road up here. And all these properties here, including the water plant property, are getting flooded out. Yeah. All the water's coming down to us. Now, let's pick a few more here. This is just a, a blow up of the development down here. It shows the lake. Uh, this is uh, the Taylor development and the East River development. So this is all being clear cut right now as we speak. And it's flowing to the west. You can see this, this is an old topographic map. It shows the old uh, wetlands here. It's out to 64, and this is all flowing north to the lake and to the river, Manatee River. A lot of it's coming down through Sand Branch. Now this is a photograph from several years ago, Ariel. This here is what is now Star Farms. South of State Road 64. They had to dig some of these huge retention ponds and drainage structures um, to try to handle the storm runoff that they were anticipating. Now, to the east, this is this is Bornside Road here, just south of State Road 64. To the east is all green back then, but now it's all clear cut. So all this stuff to the east looks just like it does on the left. Looks just like it does did on the right right now. It's all big mud hole. And the drainage structures weren't in place and they weren't operating. Same thing with Palm Grove. The drainage structures were dug, but they weren't operating. They collected water and they overflowed and they flooded out the neighborhood. Flooded out water out line road, flooded out dam road, flooded out all our properties. Uh, they're just they weren't handling the water. Water wasn't percolating. In the ground like it's supposed to. The trees weren't soaking it up like they're supposed to. A big oak tree. A big oak tree can handle, a big live oak can handle tens of thousands of gallons of water. They're not there anymore. Gone. Or they're laying in the ditches. Ditches don't get cleaned out. Well, that's another thing there, too. Uh, you know, the drainage structures and the engineers said, oh, yeah, well, we're going to develop this land and put in drainage structures that will take care of the runoff. Well, first of all, the criteria for the structure, drainage structures, are substandard. Yeah. Not adequate. Coupled with the fact that once it's installed, it has to be inspected to make sure it's done properly. Yeah. Then it has to be maintained. Maintained like every several months. You've got to demuck, you've got to desilk, you've got to take stuff out, you've got to clean it up. There's a lot you have to do to maintaining a drainage structure, a retention pump. Same thing with the dam and the lake. You know, the, the dam was put in in the late 60s. From my knowledge of uh, hydrology and dams, which I have worked on a lot, you can't just build it and leave it alone. Over time, that basin silts in. So its capacity on day one was a whole lot more than it is 50 years later yes, sir. today. Yep. Okay? Yes, sir. You've got to maintain it. You've got to demuck it. You have to to, to dig it out, you have to clean it up. That, that uh, development going on, those two, South of State Road 64, they're clear up now. They're all dumping all their, 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 their storm runoff, and dumping right into our reservoir. And not only is it bringing pollutants, but it's bringing in silt, which is reducing the capacity of the reservoir. So what the reservoir was able to hold back in the 60s is tremendously diminished today. I don't know what the plans are, if there's you know, plans for uh, cleaning that up, or maintaining it, I haven't seen it. There's something on the docket, the CIPs back in uh, several years from now where they're going to be doing something. Yeah, this is, this is something that I've been presenting to the county commissioners for, I don't know, that's 15 years or so. This is a correlation that we made 
from the county's water atlas, David. Okay? There's the lake. There's the sand branch I've been talking about. State Road 64. Here's that big development going in south of the reservoir. It's all mostly clear cut now. Okay. The, the black creeks and streams with the cross hatches, those were once waterways that were considered potable, but now they are all impaired waterways. Okay? Every one of them. Every one of them. These these waterways, black with the red hatches, are impaired waterways. Impaired. Right. And we made the correlation as development spread from west to east, the, the creeks were falling one by one. This is Braden River down here on the bottom. There's still a few feeding the Lake Manatee that are still considered uh, potable waterways. They're not impaired. Uh, Gilly Creek. Gilly Creek is not doing so well right now. But And show you a few examples of uh, this is this is Sand Branch Creek uh, before the clear cutting occurred on some of the local um, developments. Just that, that's that's what it looks like after the first clear cutting of the um, I think it's Palm Road was the first one that clear cut. This is this is not a, a major storm event. That was just a regular Saturday uh, uh, summer, you know, thunderstorm with a couple of inches of rain thereabouts. Um, I want some more of them. Martha, can't hear. Can you speak All right, so uh, sorry about the presentation and audio here. This is, we didn't have any rehearsal, that for sure. Uh, okay, so the citizens of East Manatee County area have witnessed an increase in severe flooding over the past 20, 25 years. We've correlating it to the increase in land development. It hasn't been confirmed by any engineering study. However, if confirmed with the engineering models and in-depth analysis, Who's at fault and who must fix it? I think the developers, the county, the state, federal officials, yeah. all of them. Yeah. Now just this week, just a couple days ago, there was a, a, a tour given by the county of the dam. It's uh, September 4th. And county, Deputy County Administrator Evan Pilichowski said that in regards to flooding and overdevelopment in Manatee County, this is what he said. He said, that is certainly something that bears more discussion and study as we move forward. And we should hold them to that statement. You know, once we dry out, once we dry out, don't forget, because Rain's coming again. It's going to happen again. Thank you very much.